Hey everybody, happy snow day. Super quick video here to get us kick started on solving logarithms. Here we go, it's time for math with Mr. Troy. All right. So when we looked at our exponential graphs, we saw that they passed the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you plot the inverse, then both of those functions will be one, two, one. And there are some interesting properties that come up when a graph is one to one. Since the graphs are one to one, you can use the one to one property to solve simple exponential and later on logarithmic equations. So as a reminder, here are the one to one properties and then also the inverse properties. Pause the video, write those down if you haven't already. All right, put as simply as possible, here's what this means. If I say 10 to the x equals 10, there is only one place where that can happen. It's happening with a y value of 10 and an x value of 1. So there's only one place where that can happen. Same thing here. If I say the log of x equals zero, there's only one place that that could happen. So if we can set uh, equations to have the same base, then we're going to be able to solve them really quickly. If we can set them to have the same logarithmic base, we can solve them really quickly. To use the one-to-one -one property, you have to ask yourself, do two exponential uh, expressions, say the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation, do they have the same base? If they have the same base, then their exponents must be equal to each other. So we can go directly from this equation to a much simpler equation, a much easier equation to solve. When I plug that in, you're going to see I get, oh, 7 to the negative 3 equals 7 to the negative 3. Easy to show that that's correct. Now, if two uh, bases are not the same but are compatible, we can play around with them a little bit. So, for example, I could write this as 2 to the negative 3 to the negative 3x plus 4 equals 2 squared to the 1 half x squared plus 1. Now that these have the same base, I can uh, multiply the exponents together. 2 to the 9x minus 12 equals 2 to the x squared plus 2. Now I've got the same base. I can set the exponents equal to each other and solve, always remembering to check my answers. So go ahead, you finish this one, and see what answers you get. All right, when I solved, I got x equals 7 and x equals 2. Now we want to plug those in to make sure that they work. So that would look a little bit like this. 1 eighth to the, let's check 2 first. So if I plug in 2, I'm going to get negative 6 plus 4. That's negative 2. That's going to be 64 equals 4 to the, well, 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 3, or plus 1, sorry, is 3. 
That gives me 64. That does work. Now you plug in 7 and see if it works. All right, so I plugged in 7, and I got 1 eighth to the negative 17th and 4 to the 51 halves. And I'm not sure if those equal. I think maybe there's something with the 17 and the 51, so I could plug this into my calculator and I could check. All right, so I plugged those into my calculator and I got the same thing, so that means that both of those solutions work. Okay, so here's one for you to try. Give both of these a base of three and then find x. Okay, now you actually pause the video and try that, and then I'll come back in a second. All right, I got x equals negative 19 fourths, and when I plugged that in, it worked. Hopefully you got that too. All right, so if you wanna use the one-to-one -one property for two exponents, you're gonna make the bases the same, and then you're gonna use that one-to-one -one property. So the goal is to make it the same base, and then say, okay, now the exponents have to equal each other. Now, the same thing can be done for logarithms, except logarithms have a domain restriction, so you need to be a little bit more careful with your answer here. All right, so when I uh, do this, first I have to check to make sure the bases are the same. If they're not, I might have to use the change of base formula, but the problems we start off with will have the same bases. Then, I'm going to set the arguments or the insides equal to each other. And I'm going to solve. So for this particular one, I get either five or negative two. So when I plug those in, I'll start with five. I'm gonna get the log base seven of 18. Now I don't know what that is, but it's between one and two because 18 is between seven and 49. And then when I plug it into the other side, I also get the log base seven of 18. So no need to even figure out what that number is, it works. When I plug in negative two though, I'm gonna get the log base seven of negative three. And we're gonna stop there and call that an extraneous solution. Because our um, argument can't be negative. Okay, now this only works if you have one log equaling one log, so we may need to condense. When we have subtraction, we can condense to the common log of x over two equals the common log of five. So that tells me that x over two equals five or x equals 10. Now for this one, to plug it in, I would have to say the log of 10 minus the log of two equals the log of five. This is one. I don't know the log of two off the top of my head, so I would have to plug this into a calculator to check. Let's do that. Aha, when I do that, I get the same thing. So my answer is correct, hooray. All right, and here's a summary of that. You wanna write it as log equals a log. They have to have the same base and you may need to condense. Then you're gonna use the one-to-one -one property and you do need to make sure that you check for extraneous solutions. Your argument, the inside of your logarithm, cannot be negative. All right, folks, I hope you've had a wonderful snow day. I will see you later.